yeah okay uh be, be, before i pass to uh, hamid uh what i want to show is like the there are different generation of uh, sdr so the first generation is actually what we call a uh, uh, what we call a direct conversion so this is like radio like the electraft kx3 rtl sdr these are all the uh, direct conversion radio and then this one relies yeah I am sharing the screen, right? Can you see my? Actually, share the. I actually share the my blog one. Can you see it now? Okay, we're not Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I, I, I close my video. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, the, see the presentation. Uh, not not the not the video. Okay, okay. Okay, let's uh let's let's uh I, I just want to give a very short introduction about the different generation of the SDR. So the Gen 1 is like, uh, is a direct conversion directly from HF to AF. Uh, this is the, AF is the audio frequency. So it goes directly into your sound card. So these are like uh, things like FunCube, Flex 3000, uh, and then uh, Electraft KX3. These are all the Gen 1 punya uh, SDR. Uh, so when it comes to the Gen 2, what they do is like they have this uh, analog to digital converter and digital to analog. So analog to digital is the one that we receive from the RF radio and go into the digital, which we, that's why they call it the SDR. And then the DAC is the reverse. When we transmit, we need to convert the digital back to the analog and send out to the radio. Uh, this one is very, very intensive Gen 2 because it needs a very powerful PC and the fat pipe. means that the bandwidth of the data is very high and this is like uh, very expensive. I think this is a Russian Sun SDR radio. Uh, this is also when Flex Radio released the power SDR to be open source. So this is considered like a Gen 2 kind of a, Gen 2 kind of a radio. So the third one is the what we are at. This is a Hermes. It's actually a Gen 3. Uh, processing is at the radio. So at the front end of the radio, there is a FPGA. is a field programmable grid array to process the all the analog signal. So what happened is that they, this FPGA can process 38 megahertz of data coming in one shot. Once it's processed, it will send it out through the LAN port, uh, local area network, mm. and then we could use any software we do. Like so, in this demo, uh, Hamid will show the demo on Power SDR, and then uh, lepas tu I will show the demo on the Pi SDR. So good thing about this is that all the band bypass filter, everything is done on the radio, and then uh, of course. Example of radio is like the Flex 6000, Anand, the Pi, Pi HPSDR and the Hermes. Like these are all the, the only difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 radio is just a Gen 3 with the knob. The problem with the Gen 3 radio is very nice, but because of the, during contest, they, they don't, they need to press the mouse. They don't want, they want the knobs 
like a real radio, the knobs and the buttons. That's why the the uh, so the difference between a Gen three and Gen four is just that it's a Gen three with a button. Yeah, uh, these are things like all the Sun SDR and then the Flex sixty seven and this the the Apache Lab. So we actually at a this is actually a very uh. So what this radio does is that uh. Let me just uh, let me just quit one. Quit one uh, that. Let me share the. Let me share this one. Yeah. So this is the main site for the the uh the Hermes light. Uh, basically, it is actually just a chip with a uh, the uh like an F uh FPGA chip. Let me pass to uh. Let me pass to uh, Hamid to uh, do the demo for the uh, power SDR. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to share the full screen. Uh, all right. Um, can you see my Okay, uh, okay, this is the board, eh? Uh, kat bawah ni dia punya uh, 
like SDR dia yang atas nampak uh, my mark eh bergerak eh yes yes and this one is a filter eh yes. kanan atas tu filter yang connected to antenna tu ha, tu dia punya uh, manfaat filter dia lah dapat uh, manfaat filter dia uh, yang kita orang beli uh, in a case yang bawa in this case lah and uh, kita tadi dah dah dah, dah terwilkan untuk kita dah uh, make it ready <laughs> kita just uh, pasang and then run it je lah. Anyway, so balik ke power SDR. Uh, this power SDR, uh, I think uh, for power SDR, dia ada limit the uh, number of uh, uh, bandwidth yang kita boleh show kot. Uh, untuk ni, kita boleh tunjuk dari 7 sampai 7124 rasanya. Kita boleh zoom. Uh, I think kalau I ada screen lagi besar mungkin uh, lagi lagi banyak lah tu. There is another software yang boleh buat event show uh, multiple bands dalam satu screen. <laughs> uh, but then uh, nak 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 zoom in boleh, nak zoom out boleh. Yang ni 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 yang paling banyak yang yang paling uh, tinggi lah kita zoom out kan dia. Uh, okay. Um, sekarang ni uh, yang ni boleh untuk ya lah kalau I main I main digital mode so I nak tunjuk sikit on on digital lah connectivity dia uh, dengan uh, apa nama uh, WLJTX eh uh, untuk dalam uh, penggunaan uh, power uh, power SDR atau any uh, SDR software uh, dan other mode uh, tak kira lah audio, yang guna audio ke yang guna digital ke uh, kita selalunya ada guna third party uh, software virtual audio cable dan uh, yang ni uh, untuk uh, reroute kita punya audio daripada power SDR or any SDR software ke another uh, software siapa yang main sebelum ni rasa yang uh, SSD mungkin pernah kot guna home listing eh. tegung-tegung punya tu semua ada guna, pernah guna kot tapi ya, kalau untuk main uh, SDR dengan digital uh, this is one of the things yang required satu lagi adalah Uh, virtual uh, serial port eh? uh, yang ni uh, selalunya kita guna untuk tap punya control uh, so kita boleh control uh, radio daripada uh, any uh, software uh, macam tadi ni guna WLJTX kita boleh control dia punya uh, frekuensi uh, band kita boleh jump dia dia akan bertukar uh, that's a, a pack of guna-guna uh, this, this uh, virtual port punya pack ok uh, that's power SDR on uh, yang ni ok yang tadi eh uh, untuk audio dia tadi kita kena reroute dari power SDR ni ke WLJTX kita guna virtual audio cable apa nak wujud audio cable ni uh, bagi tahu lah nanti ada tu ni part uh, apa yang berminat lah <laughs> I pass the link lah uh, di uh, guna google drive nanti I, I, I pass the link uh, dia punya ni input and output you just uh, reroute to a virtual audio cable so, and then you tak dengar lah apa dia punya ni audio daripada power SDR ke WLJTX uh, dia punya tu kat sini eh uh, dalam power 
ITR tu DAC Line 2, Line 1 virtual radio cable Output, Line 1 virtual radio cable And WSJTX on audio Line 1 virtual audio cable And Output pun virtual audio cable Dan yang control dia Ini yang kita set guna scan control dan control ini uh, yang kita ni kena ada ada pair kalau so, from 10 from from 11 dan from 10 dia a pair so kapal WSTR kita guna from 10 and then uh, kita, uh, software yang nak control uh, kita punya radio tu kita guna from 11 uh, sekarang ni kita guna tipu dia ring dia kita set STS 2000 kapal WSTR and then kat WSJTF pun from Asian Wood TS2000 so dia guna scan punya yang compatible with Asian Wood TS2000 so untuk control dan another thing saya punya ni tadi Stanley kata dalam orang guna SDR ni dia tak ada knob tak ada roasting Uh, actually ada option lain uh, macam saya saya sebelum ni guna power SDR power SDR uh, yang saya punya it come with uh, this uh, flex control knob uh, flex control knob ni uh, so you can uh, sedikit lah macam uh, radio radio biasa <laughs> radio analog biasa radio radio HF biasa Uh, so uh, dalam power SDR ni kita control dia under cap uh, yeah, cap control juga lah <laughs> but then I'm using another uh, software which allow me to control the knob DD util Is it rig rig control? Sorry. Is it called rig control? The Pi SDR is called rig control. Ah, yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. Ini dah dia dah dah pengong dah pula di sana ni. Okay, I think I I said I delete something. Uh, dia tak jumpa dah. Uh, I punya ni. Tapi uh, I can control. Uh, so I can uh, just uh, oh, memang dia tak nak ni lah dia some, something wrong dengan punya review ini ini bolehnya guna guna komputer ni tak betul setting and then uh, you need to find out and then uh, and then uh, nak kena reboot and then uh, reset semua everything Uh, but uh, the good thing ah uh, uh, now we have those uh, apa nama yang baru-baru STDX uh, 10 uh, 7300 uh, 7300 uh, iPhone uh, I think uh, ada banyak-banyak banyak lagi yang ada dah built in SDR punya software dengan uh, waterfall uh, so we do not need this uh, PC untuk control Uh, tapi uh, I think yang I really uh, excited dengan penggunaan SDR ni because of uh, dia punya flexibility dia uh, you can uh, apa nama, guna banyak software yang berlainan and then uh, you boleh connect the different software and then uh, you can update uh, SDR punya firmware uh, ada multiple orang uh, fork dia punya implementation so kita boleh pilih yang mana kita nak that's the flexibility about this uh, how much uh, like uh, SDR lah actually um, yang kalau flex radio is not that uh, flexible in term of uh, firmware because uh, dia commercial but yang this firmware I think ada few uh, firmware available untuk kita guna alright uh, Any any question uh, on power SDR? Tak ada. Uh, I tak nampak. Uh, oh, Mi. Uh, let's put PC. Uh, 
kunci dia apa i7 nak pakai i minimum minimum i guna i i5 lama punya i5 second hand i5 yang i guna untuk jadi gateway for everything is a is a my amateur radio punya pc semua ada dalam ni So, sekarang ni jadi gateway YSX, uh, Intran, uh, apa lagi dah ada dalam ni. Uh, so, it's not, I think I3 pun boleh kot. Uh, dia, kalau yang macam ni, dia tak perlukan banyak sangat processing power because of uh, macam uh, standing kata tadi. Uh, dia punya processing dia dah offload kat, uh, kat, kat radio. Dia tak macam yang generasi pertama punya banyak processing tu dia dia bawa ke ke PC sebab saya dia connect guna USB so dia banyak processing tu kat PC ya saja atau balik ke 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 apa nama ke radio tapi yang uh, yang baru punya ni yang uh, sama slide ni as uh, apa nama tadi kata tadi dia banyak processing dia dah balik kepada radio Cuma uh, macam yang dia, dia different dengan Gen 4 tadi uh, Gen 4 dia dah ada semua screen semua kat radio balik <laughs> So everything semua kat radio Show so, your task ready. manager I mean, ha? Show your task manager See the CPU uh, Performance Google Oh Google yang guna banyak <laughs> Dalam 15, 14, 16% Pasal dia, dia punya ni semua dah, dah dah offload balik ke radio Sebelum ni kalau kita run uh, power SDR dengan flex radio uh, Dia takes a lot of uh, CPU power kat kita punya ni Because of the, all the processing the load kat, kat PC Okay, thank you, thank you Dia nak tanya ni, you shot Pakai uh, pakai ni handsome tak? Kalau handsome, mungkin nak juga ni. Eh? Eh, tetap handsome. Janji ada yang tu. <laughs> Alright. Okay, back to you, Sunday. Right. Yeah, uh, any any other question on the power SDR? Yeah, uh, what's the minimum windows? Uh, Because I far as far as the sense about Windows 10 sebegini lah. Kalau yang Windows 7 boleh bantu ni dah. Sebelum ni, bila I guna power SDR with my flex radio, I guna Windows 7. And this one, I believe, should run on the Windows 7 without problem. Nah, root down and the Windows 7 okay. Kalau PC buang ke yang ada yang terlihat? PC apa? PC buang buang, buang bahan. Ah, okay. Uh, itu kena tanya Stanley. Kalau dia pakai buang juga. <laughs> uh, uh, kalau kalau PC buang, you pakai the the uh, Linux version. Sebab ini power SDR dia compile untuk Windows saja. Yeah, so so that's the next one. Uh, next one yang I I tunjuk on my on my the radio here. This the the one that you saw on my video background. That one is actually running on a Raspberry Pi. Let me just uh, let me hide it for you. Okay. Uh, uh, if you focus on my video, you nampak this one is actually a Raspberry Pi. Just a Raspberry Pi four. And then it has this, like uh, this is a this is a normal Raspberry Pi. Uh, resolution this one also very low, I You know, uh, uh, this this one have, uh, the resolution, the screen resolution. Ni is only uh, 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 800 by 600 saja. So this one the resolution ni uh very very low so that uh because this software the this pi the this this software is called 
Pi HP SDR. High, I think HP means high performance SDR. Uh, this one runs on a entire on a Raspberry Pi uh, with a the original one they they compile for a seven inch punya touch screen. So uh, this one is like a uh, you you put a standalone. The the good thing about this is because it's on a Raspberry Pi, you boleh cuchok the HDMI kepada your TV pun boleh. Uh, so you you dapat uh, berapa besar your TV, that's the screen you dapat. Ah, <laughs> uh, this one there's a few other macam ah uh, a few other setting. You you can set the sample rate to ah forty eight K. 96k, 192k, and 384k. This sample rate is the one yang determine how big you can see the the scope. So sekarang uh, I have two, I have two uh, receiver, one on four seven point zero seven megahertz, and another one in a in a different. So you can have uh, actually up to uh, in certain in certain scenario if you load a different uh, gateway dia ni macam firmware onto the radio you can actually get uh, up to like seven or five or six band simultaneously you can actually uh, set up for uh, for that so so this one is uh, what I, this one the Pi SDR is only set up for a uh, two two receiver. Ni. The reason all this button here is so that uh in that actual the de actual device. So if you if you do not want to run on a window, you could just run this on a on a Raspberry Pi. Plug in a mouse. Uh, then 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 you can uh, you can do it. So this one itself is like uh run on a normal. I think I'm using. This should be a is a Pi four. Let me see other. Uh, this one should be a. Oh, okay. I don't have a keyboard. This one is a Pi four with a I think a four, four uh, four four gig of RAM. So uh, you can do all the other function, like change the mode. Same thing, change the filter. All these are uh, normal radio stuff. The the noise filtering is very good actually for for this one. The the because it's a digital, this noise filtering is almost as good as those are uh, commercial you know, the the radio. Uh, let's listen to some. Uh, let me change to. Uh, let's listen to something. I don't know what's the difference. Uh, just, just drag here. If you want, you could, you could zoom it in. All the way to the, uh, all the way to the max, or you could zoom out all the way. This would be bandwidth should be. This bandwidth should be 192, so you can see the entire 192 uh, spectrum. Or if you want, you could. Uh, I think this one I can even go up to 384. So you can see more. Mo most radio is only at like 48 or something like that. Uh, yeah. So this one is a. Uh, this one. Let me change to a. Uh, let me change to another. Another band, huh? so you can have like uh, two band, I think running at the same time also. Ah. Uh, this this band, is <laughs> no. So in this scenario, it's good if you got two. If you want just to connect for your uh, digital, and then the second one is for other other bands. Huh? Let's try now. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So this this one is a uh, uh, this one is the Pi SDR. Uh, I can hide it. Uh, you can see the Raspberry Pi uh, desktop. This is very easy to install. You install a normal blank Raspberry Pi. The past two just install this software like the website, and then you just uh, double click to run. The rest, everything else is all in the setting. How this guy, let me just uh, exit. How this guy uh, run is like, this is just like uh, any computer. Then I when I run the software, it will detect the, where is the Hermes light on the network. Let it find the network. Mm -hmm. You could do it over gigabit internet or Wi-Fi pun boleh. So I think uh, the bandwidth is not really that uh, heavy. I think like 20 over max. So uh, I can I can connect using my wireless LAN or I can connect using the internet. I just connect using the internet. Stanley. Yeah. Can I run uh, from outside of your home network? Is that it? Remote? Uh, so far, Bloom, I have not tried it actually. Mm. Where would Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some something else. Uh, we probably want to uh talk about is the about the because this is only a five watt. Uh, how how to connect to like a uh, power amp amplifier. Ben, you got something? Anything to show, Ben? Sorry, um, yeah, I do not have, no, my Hermes is not connected to the power amplifier yet. Uh -huh. What I can show is uh, how to do multi-band SDS skinning. Yes, yes. Ah, yeah, okay. I, I passed it. Okay. I have to share my screen, right? Ah, yes. How do I do so? Uh, there is a Tabawa to the back end. Present now. Present now. Present now and then entire screen. Yeah. Okay, so I guess everyone can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it, are you guys seeing the uh, website, the PSK reporter? Uh, uh, ah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, okay, first thing first, uh, to those who are not familiar with uh, PSK reporter, um, it is very useful, let's say, when one day you want to go on air. Um, which band do you want to use? Or um, the band is open to which country? So if you have um, a PSK reporter schema, um, it's very useful. So for those who are familiar with this map, yeah, they can already tell that uh, this this color, orange color, is 20 meter. Green is 10 meter. No, not 10 meter. 30 meter, uh, this blue is a 40 meter and so on, and uh, which part of the world is the band is open to. So right now I'm actually uh, reading those spots from my uh, station. Uh, just one thing, usually you can also do a quick square search like that. Then whichever receiver in this uh, grid square OJ11 will be displayed. So right now we can tell that 20 meter is open to Europe. And okay, why I want to say this is because uh, right now I notice in West Malaysia there's uh, not many. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Now it's because I opened OJ11, but uh, normally also in West Malaysia there's very little. So it would be useful if you have a more FTS schema. Yeah, probably you can recruit more people to get have a flight there and then run the schema. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when when more stations actually steam together, then you get a more representative uh, data. As you can see now, it's loaded OJ11. So right now, I think we have uh, my station and also 91RM 
everyone combined. Uh, as, as you can see right now, we have so many uh, stations on receiving us, uh, not transmitting. So, okay. Yeah, I've turned to, I turned to anyone and you can see it's only 9 and 2 to you. It's <laughs> the usual one is here. Okay, um, moving on. Okay, traditionally, uh, how we do multi-band steaming is we can run something like uh, SDR Uno and then you run multiple, so you have a, a very wide uh, bandwidth, let's say from 40 meter to uh, 20 meter. You can only steam three bands, uh, the 40, and 30, and then 20 meter, and that's it. And it's also very uh, CPU intensive. So sometimes it will lag. And then using this method, okay, bring up the, okay. so using this method, first you have a main receiver, and then you have to turn on a multiple slice of this uh, sub receiver, and then you have to you have to have uh, virtual audio cables for each each uh, sub receiver, and then you have to turn on like in this case four instances of uh, WSJTX. So this is very very CPU intensive, and this is not what we want to do. So, okay, using Hermes Lite 2.0, you can run a Spark SDR, and right here what you can see is, I don't need to turn on WSJTX. I do not need to run any virtual audio cables. I just run Spark SDR, turn on four virtual receivers, uh, tune them to the FT8 frequency, and then I choose FT8 mode, and voila, uh, it's already uh, decoding and uploading to TSP reporter. This one is from uh, one HP uh, Hermes Lite? Yes, this is from uh, Hermes Lite. Just one, one unit, not one, one unit. So the beautiful thing about this is you can run this off network. I believe just now Stanley and Hamid should have told you guys. So you can put this Hermes Slide anywhere convenient near to the antenna using a receiving loop like an MFA 30 and then just leave it there running. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay, the original, what do you call that? It's called a gateway, right? The original gateway can slice up to four slices. But then from what I'm trying now is uh, you can only go from um, 40 meter to 20 meter, which is like just now the SDR play, but then if you use a custom uh, gateway, okay, okay, the the main the main gateway is uh, yeah straightforward is the original stock firmware, but if you upload a custom um, gateway, what it does is for each uh, slice it actually reduce the bandwidth. Uh, just nice for FT8 steaming because uh, FT8 you, don't need, you probably need about only uh, three kilohertz of bandwidth. So uh, what it does is it gives you more slices to fit from like 80 meter to 10 meter. Um, the uh, okay this this custom gateway can actually uh, support up to 10 slices if I'm not mistaken. I need to update my where? Yeah, to yeah. add to add to what Benjamin said, the gateway is actually is like a firmware for the FPGA. It will tell the firmware instead of four receiver, please uh, set up ten receiver for me. So so it automatically use all the uh, circuit and then it will reconfigure the circuit for ten receiver. Yeah, so uh, basically as what you guys can see here, um, up uploading the gateway is like super easy and it's just selecting the uh, appropriate file and then just program it, that's all. So it's uh, very, very uh, user friendly. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned just now, the stock firmware will actually have, uh, it actually support two, two receiver and uh, one TX, but then this custom firmware actually uh, use everything 
the Hermes can uh, support. Um, it even use the TX circuit for receiving and then give you a 10 slice uh, receiver. So, okay, uh, the custom gateway has already been uploaded. Okay, and as you can see, I just refresh and then it can uh, detect the Hermes slide already. When I turn it on, then okay, I cannot remember all the frequency to be prepared in advance. Okay, so here we go. Um, we can add many, many slides. And then we can start from, usually you can start from 80 meter to 3.5, but okay, 0, 7, 8, 7. Yes. Other than uh, FTA, uh, can we use uh, CW schema? Yes, uh, I will show you that later, but CW ah. schema, you have to use a separate software. Okay, ah. but then uh, Spark SDR can support also, if you don't want to do FDA, some, some people don't like, you can do Whisper, ft ah. 4 JT9. Is it CW? CW, no. Oh. Yeah. There, there, uh, there, there is that. Uh, almost at the end, there is a CW there, but it doesn't uh, support it. Yet. Yeah, okay. this one is used to receive and uh, transmit to work CW mode, but to skim it, you actually uh, need a specific software. Alright, that, that CW schema software, is it? Yes. Okay. So, okay, we started the 40 meter uh, slice, and uh, what's nice about SPA SDR is, uh, is what, what is decoded is shown here, so you can see, and then you can also, oh, we have someone from Nagi School 2 and so on. Okay, and then it's also plotted on a very nice map over here. So, okay, moving on. Then the next slice is we can do uh, 30 meter, 1, 3, 6. Uh, can you share to us what the antenna you are using? <laughs> okay, I'm just using a very humble. Uh, MLA 30, which you can get from Lazada or even uh, Taobao, AliExpress. And it doesn't cost much. Uh, uh, how much is it in Ringgit? Uh, in Ringgit, I've read it. I've read it handy. It's a very nice antenna because um, it's wide band and uh, low noise. Okay, as you can see here, uh, 30 meter has already gone into action. You have 12 uh, decoded signal. Um, okay. On then the next one is empty the we can see empty meter is booming tonight. Okay, after twenty meter is uh, well, anyway I'll, I'll just stop here but the idea is there. Um, with a custom gateway, meaning you are not going to use your radio for any other thing but skimming. You upload custom gateway, you can uh, add up to 10 slice of uh, virtual receiver and you can skim from, say, uh, how much? Uh, we call that 80 meter up to uh, 10 meter. Another thing, uh, Ben. Yes. Can I it like that? How much like? That that SDR uh, blocks uh, dongle. Can we use it? I believe as long as you can uh, create sub receivers, virtual receiver, then you can do it. But then I foresee, like I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my uh, presentation, is those method you need uh, virtual audio cable for oh. every sub receiver. Oh, yes. Spark SDR doesn't support uh, the SDR dongle, is it? Uh, no, if I'm not mistaken, Spark SDR is uh, specifically for this. Ah, okay. All right. I might be wrong. Uh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then again, the beauty of this whole Spark SDR thing is that you don't need virtual audio cable. You don't need to even turn on WSJTX. So it's very clean and doesn't use a lot of uh, CPU power. Even even a lower end PC will just do the job. 
So yeah, um, it's receiving only. It's receiving only when you use the custom firmware. Then it's receiving only. Okay. So then again, you guys can once you run a FTS schema. Yep. It's shown on the map. It's a very very useful. Even if you don't do FTS, it's a very useful tool for you to study the propagation. The band is open to which country and open what band is open. So, okay, the next one I'll do a quick demo is uh, CW scheming. Okay, CW scheming, you have to use something called a schema server. Okay, you have to install a DDL or some custom DDL into this CW schema. And then it will appear here from this light. Then you can use it. You can choose. You have to use the custom firmware for this CW schema. And you can see you can scheme up to so many pens at one time. Like two, three, four, five, six, eight pens. And it's very easy. But uh, this. Uh, Software CW scheme is not free, unfortunately, uh, but it's a very, very useful tool again. So you just uh, install a custom DLL, just copy and paste, very easy. A mislike will come out, and then just uh, run this uh, CW server, and it's already running. Okay, to upload the data onto the uh, reverse beacon network, then you need something called aggregator. Okay, so what, what schema server does it, it decodes, but it doesn't upload to the reverse beacon network. So you need an aggregator software, and then uh, you have to connect. You have to. The aggregator, is it uh, from the same? Uh, yes, it's, a, it's a provided by schema ah. server so you you bought the schema server or is it the cw schema and then it comes with it when you when you purchase the cw schema the license is include including the schema server how much is it i can't recall <laughs> okay. but uh if if you like to do uh, this kind of uh, scheming fda scheming uh, cw scheming uh, to serve the uh, the Xing community, then it's actually worth it. Yeah. So uh, no spot yet, but yeah, this is it. And then at the same time, you can run a CW reporter. What this does is, it will actually okay. Aggregator will uh, aggregator will upload to reverse beacon network server, and CW reporter will upload to. Um, what you call that? Uh, PSK reporter. Oh, not cluster. The reverse beacon network one will be connected to a cluster. Ah, okay. Yeah, then uh, this is a reverse uh, beacon network where you can see, okay, let's say in the future someone in West Malaysia actually running this, so you can search his, uh, his uh, station, and then these are the stations that actually received by this person. So what what is nice about this is you can straight away jump to seven zero four zero. Starting to wire. You can jump to seven zero four zero and then you can work this station. So yeah, Stanley, uh, that's about it, I guess. Mm. Okay, Ben, yeah, thanks thanks for the very detailed uh, update on the uh, both this software on the FT eight skimming and the CW skimming. Yeah, yeah, I think uh Let's open up for questions now. Uh, yeah. Uh, any generic question on uh, SDR? Okay. <laughs> then 
tadi boleh jawab. 